thank you everyone for joining us. We can't see your beautiful faces, but you can see how beautiful we are. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. If you have questions along the way, uh, feel free to go ahead and pop them in the Q&A, just so when we get to that point, we can start like already, already having some. So I will pass it off to Max and Stuart now. Oh, we're just going. First of all, I should say uh, happy book pub week to Max. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, which book in the uh, in the Last Kid series? It is. Uh, it's confusing. So <laughs> the number on the side is seven. Okay. Uh, like we did the ju a book just about June it was like a side quest one, right? With, which has nothing on the side. We didn't right. number it, so we didn't want to like disappoint people who thought it was like the next book, right? But okay. Really liked it, and now I get like messages like, "Why is the book with the female protagonist not numbered that's horrible and then so i try to so <laughs> my efforts to like not make people upset i made people upset so yeah, um, hey women don't need that kind of affirmation the mm -hmm. way that men do that's right i'm not a number I am, uh, all right so what's what's going on in in, uh, in 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 this book that you've got uh the new one the new one or june you could talk about june but the new one is it is so it picks up like right after the, the same second as the previous book ended, um, which is helpful when beginning to outline because <laughs> and that's my new trick. And um, it is, so it's there's a giant. The world's largest shopping mall is on the back of a giant monster, which just sort of travels across the country, the torn up end of the world country, and um, the. Our heroes are like sucked on board, like it's a Roomba, it runs over them. And then Jack has to run for um, like the mayor of the city because there's another bad guy who's ruling it like a dictator. And so it's, it's, like, it's, like, a, the, it's like a class president school election vibe. I watched election a bunch of times while so doing it. Um, and so that's like the vibe of it. It's so it's like all like election, like school, like poster jokes and things like that. And like coming up with funny slogans. Um, <laughs> And then, uh, and then there's fighting and zombies. All right. Yeah. Next and again, happy um, uh, pub day, pub week minus one or plus one. Plus. I, think, I think I'm two out. I'm two out now. Right. Yeah. This is, yeah, the second, wait. No, yeah, this is three weeks after? Uh, well, uh, uh, yesterday, yesterday was two weeks that this book was out. So, yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. So, I mean, we're, it, it's, uh, right. It's still, it's a newborn. Really, still so. a baby. It's still yeah, a baby. Right. right. It's still adorable. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. So this is this is number nine in Spy School. Uh, I guess I don't have to hold it up because I have it. I have a, I have a giant one back there. But it comes it's in two sizes. It comes, in, it comes in giant and and uh, and and you know car you know portable. Uh, and then uh, right. And uh, so yeah, this is number nine in in Spy School where uh, the. Uh, uh, ben uh, Ripley, uh, junior uh, CIA agent, is sent undercover uh, onto uh, the world's largest cruise ship to track down his nemesis, uh, and so uh, he has to go undercover with uh, with um, a family of spies that he knows, including uh, uh, Erica and his his best friend Mike is going to pose as his brother. But uh, they have just uh, it, it doesn't start a second after the last book, but in the end of the last book, they kind of. Uh, revealed they, they made a Mike and, and Ben made a very big mistake and uh, uh, involving uh, this family they have to go undercover with so they're kind of like oh no we're gonna get in trouble the whole time and so they've got that going on and you know a, a huge evil bad guy plot that they've got to figure out and foil so is this the same bad guy always or no uh, I, I try and mix it up, but there's there's some uh, recurring uh, bad guys uh, like like there, there's one guy who sort of shows up uh no matter who the you know he kind of he, he's like a freelance yeah, bad guy he kind of goes around right to to the different <laughs> any dances right he moves like that uh right so he you know it, it, it you try and keep some like i don't know kids are always writing saying like what, what happened to this person what happened to this person bring this person back like you know uh, right every time you introduce somebody there's like at least one kid who's like why did you not have that person in the next book so i had that issue a lot where i have characters who come and go then i'm like oh, i'll bring them back but it's like four books later in my head i'm like sort of there the whole time then i realized like oh that kid was like nine and now he's 13 because right, right. yes that happens like, oh right well, wasn't that quick did you spend a lot of time looking at like diagrams of um of cruise ships and stuff i, I did well actually i i mean i i went on one 
to sort of uh, which which was I mean I, I was thinking about this already and then and then my family I went on a cruise ship and and you know whenever you're on uh, I don't know if you're on vacation but you always go like hey if this vacation is really terrible at least we can like declare it was all research or research something. yeah, yeah. and uh, so yeah so I uh, so I we were on this this uh, cruise ship. But they're enormous and they're all kind of right as, as I was working on the book, you know, you, I would think like, like, OK, our cruise ship had this, but what else do they have? And, and you really get to this place of saying like, like I was trying to make up this this crazy cruise ship and I would think like, OK, well, I'll put something they would never have on a cruise. No, they ship. have all of it. Right. Yes. But I was yeah. like, they would never have like a roller skating rink on a cruise ship because cruise ships go like this, right? You know, and yeah. no, but, or a ice skating rink because that's, that's not only does the floor go like this, but now you have blades on your shoes and that seems like the worst thing ever. And yet, you know, they, right. giant dominoes set laid out. <laughs> they would never do that. <laughs> right. They just get them right. I mean, like kids, like the giant dominoes room in a storm, they'd be like, okay, we've got two. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I, I did the same thing because I, I was looking at stuff in malls and like huge, massive malls around the world. And I was like, there's no way they're going to have like skiing. And they do. They have like indoor ski jumps and like all this stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, I can pretty much put anything I want in there then. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, right. That that one in, in, in Dubai. Right. In yeah. the hottest oh, place oh, on yeah. earth, they put, a, they put a, a ski mountain in in the mall. Right. So, I and penguins. Right. Yeah. Wait, so who's older? In real, like, who's older in time past? Ripley the kid? Oh, right, yeah. Or Ripley a dog? Or my dog, Ripley. Uh, um, no, my dog is uh, turning five next, next. Uh, okay. Week. So he's, uh, right. So he's, he's, he, he was named after the character. Okay. Got Who it. was named after uh, the character in, in Alien, just right. in case you want to pray. So, because okay. you know, Ellen Ripley's like the coolest action hero of all time and don't watch the movies yet kids until your parents say it's okay but when they say it's okay you can watch I know pg-13 i, I don't I, it may be before pg-13 but okay. she's super cool she's super okay. cool and so um there's an alien exhibit right now in los angeles at the hollywood museum of, of stuff i forget what it's called but really have, yeah it's cool no it's not it's not like one it's like it's like a little thing of an exhibit but it's oh. very cool yeah <laughs> wait um, the hollywood museum of stuff yeah, it's called, it's like the Mac, is it Mac or? I don't know. I don't know, it's like a retro, yeah. it's very cool. Okay. I think I see right. the bike from Alma. Uh, uh, no, I, I should, uh, right. I, I will are you just know. Are right now? Hmm? You're writing book 10 right now? I am writing book 10 right now, yeah. Okay. How right. far along are you? Uh, I am actually pretty far. I've, I've, I've done, uh, I've done several drafts. It comes what? out like this time next year. Yeah, I know. I, I'm, <laughs> my, I'm outlined. Remember, your publicist is watching, right? Now, outline. Right? That's, That's the the outline. Part. But That's how long? But, but your your books are like eighty words or something, right? Thirty five thousand. <laughs> oh man! Or well, uh, forty. How many uh, right. words are yours? Yeah, you. Uh, they're like seventy thousand. Right? So oh, maybe man. even less. I. I. So right. So yeah. No. Uh, really? I'm not. I'm not saying you should get to work, but. Uh, well, I was. I'm like ahead of it per usual. Okay. All right. Well, there we go. I have yeah, one idea. Okay. The uh, Quentin Dirk, a book comes. There's a Quentin Dirk side quest book that comes out first, and I'm still finishing that. That's an eight. Okay. Well, so right. that but, this, but, the, but the next book will come out next this time next year. There will be. This is why it gets confusing. Number eight will be out this time in September. An equally right. long book starring the same characters, right. but minus two of them, will be out this April. Seven. That's like seven and a half. That's yes, and that's what I wanted to do. But then a certain website that sells a lot of books would doesn't allow you to do half number, uh, right. but doesn't like doesn't actually become like in doesn't like right, thing. right, so, right. Like, yeah, they don't like colons either on that website. Just you know, no, I know that's why it's. Uh, uh, all right, so what is it? So obviously, well, we just saw sort of some of the magic there with your with your board full yes. of of, uh, of outlining. That's 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 what happens. You you're just putting. Was that post-it notes? Those are th no, those are not post-it notes. Those are uh, index cards. Index so that's, cards. That's book right. eight, and in the corner, like hiding behind the books I'm supposed to sign, are um, that's that is what will be Quentin Dirk's Hero Quest, which is book seven and a half. Okay. Yeah. Right. 
and then um, there's other various note cards and things scattered throughout. I'm sitting on brilliant ideas. So right now, your publicist is going like, "Okay, wait a minute." Max has announced that he's he's not he's he hasn't even started writing, and he's got all these books he hasn't signed. Oh no, no I, those are stock. I have to all oh, I have left oh, right. is one one last stack of these. Like, okay, there we go. All right. all going out. Tomorrow, I'll be Chevalier's bright and early. Someone's going to bring me a muffin, and I'm going to be signing all the stock there, too. Fantastic. All right. Um, so, okay, so so you do that process, and then and then that's your outline? Uh, to put no, all then that becomes the outline, and okay. the outline is very detailed, and it's, like, almost the same word count as the final book. And then I open up the two documents side by side, like in that split view in Microsoft. Right. And then I take the um, outline and I start adding like quotation marks around stuff. <laughs> and like, and I, and it because I just like, I literally like just sort of copied over a scene by scene and flesh it out. Wow, um, that's a tremendously long outline. It's a tremendously long outline because because I've gotten myself into some real jams where I've, I've not outlined well enough and really been over a barrel at some point. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's like that's like in television. In television, you do an outline that I, I swear is like longer than the actual TV script. And it's like you go back and they're like, okay, you can write it. And you're like, I, I have written it. Yeah, I'm just pulling it out of here now. Now yeah. I'm just gonna go in and space it differently. Exactly. And and that's it. Right. I put every joke in there. Uh wow. Okay, that that is a uh that is a huge amount of my, my outline looks like uh like uh I mean it, it's really like written on on post-it notes and stuff. It's just like it's just I, it's all you you're more of like a writer than I am. Like you just sit down, really you just go and like write, and I have to take a whole headspace. And it's like once, like I'm like a werewolf. Like the moon is right, and then like I get 19 words done. <laughs> but then I'm supposed to do like three books a year, and so it's hard. But do you have you have like a ritual that you have to do before you before you start writing every time? Um. Uh. Yeah. Like a, like a blood like a sacrifice. No, not uh, like I said. Well, I mean. Again, your publicist is all, and children, so I've, I no, I I, I write like at night. I, I write mostly at night because okay. I get very um, I don't know. To I I feel there's not even people distracting me, but I feel like pressured by like non like emails that don't even exist during the day. So okay. I have my box that I use my my kitchen safe overeaters box. Wait. Wait, what so, is that? That's a. <laughs> it's for food. If you're somebody okay. who, like, like myself, who like can't stop eat, I think like, right. I can't keep like chopping the house, so I eat it all. Okay. It's, it has a timer right. in it. You put this thick cube. So you put like food in it. Right. I locked it by mistake earlier. Oh, I can't play my <laughs> video games. Darn it! I did this before. See, right now these little things are sliding out. Right. I thought I heard a noise before. Okay. Right. So you can turn, right now I have two hours and thirty six minutes left until I can play Zelda on my Switch. Um, oh my gosh! Right. So I put my phone in there, and I put right. this stuff in there, right? And, um, and I then lock it while I'm writing. Um, okay. And I, but I, and I bring it to like if I'm writing, I bring it on tour with me if I'm writing. Okay. I've gotten a lot of weird TSA things, like people wondering like what the thing that spins and makes a weird noise. Right. It, it turns right. a countdown right. timer on is. Right. Um, okay. So that's how that's how I try to block out the outside world. But even that, I still need to do most of my stuff at night, or else I, um, yeah. Have you um, ever locked something in it by accident, like your car keys, when you're like, oh, crap. I've broken up. I've broken. I I was doing a presentation because I've been doing this for like years now. So I was doing a presentation when my wife, who you know, was pregnant, um, and I was like, I'll show you how it works with my phone. And she was eight months eight months pregnant, and I I meant to set it for five minutes. I did it for um, five days. Yeah, it, can go, it can go up to seven days and you can't be without i can't be without my phone when she's eight months pregnant so i had to smash it um you can luckily you can buy like just from kitchensafe.com i don't work for them it sounds like i'm like i'm on right, yes, exactly right um you, you can you can buy just the plastic smash part and keep your all the all the, the, the brain is up here the mechanics are in here. right 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 so, so you just keep why... that hammer around in case of emergencies so. no I'm... <laughs> <laughs> For real, like I, step on little, I step on little pieces of it sometimes. Oh, like, yeah, okay, times. All right, still broken. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so oh, and I also have this rock here just in case I'm oh, right, okay, right. You really wouldn't be able to go outside and find a rock, no, there's well, actually, actually, no, there's only like little pebbles. I right. can find a bunch of squirrels and some rats. <laughs>
Um, but that's it. No. Um, I can find other stuff in here. I get the glove. Um, you know what would be interesting is we've got raccoons in the neighborhood, and I'll bet that if you like you left that out with like food in it, like a raccoon could be into it in like five seconds. They'd just be like, okay, we've got the coat. Oh man, there you go. And then oh, <laughs> <laughs> Although if I had this thing, what I would use it, if I had a real one, I would use it to mess with time to better meet my deadlines. Would you? That's right. That's Wait, is I'm that saying. how, I don't even know that, right, so you can do anything with all the infinity stones, you just snap and then you go like, so. You can do anything, but you're not outside like the time, the like the, the time variant association or whatever, the time Right, variant. right, right. Yes, yes. You can do pretty much anything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you have them all. So there could be somebody who's got them all who's just like, ooh, I would like some ice cream. And then, you know. Yeah, I think that's the first thing I would do. Right, right. I would get the uh, there's a good new flavor I had like a birthday cake from Jenny's down the sh- street from us. Right by Chevaliers. By, right by Chevaliers. So you, you can drop by Chevaliers, get a signed copy of Last Kids on Earth Doomsday Race, and then just pop into Jenny's and get yourself get some ice cream, spill right. it on it, have right. to go buy another copy. Right. I'm just realizing it's like some kind of special kids thing today where you buy a cone and then you get like a free kids cone at Jenny's. Is it? Yeah. All right. Okay. Hey, hey, well, yeah, right. That's. Uh, and if you buy uh, a, a book at uh, Chevalier's, you get a pamphlet. I don't know. You used, to, used to get you used to get a copy of the Constitution when you went to Chevalier's. That was that was a there was a brief period of time where they were, they would give you a copy of the Constitution when you bought a book. Really? Yes. Yeah, so we the uh, owners were very concerned about the state of the country a couple of years ago, and so you got got a copy of the Constitution. If you want it, but you get a bookmark. bookmark? You, get a, you get a bookmark. My daughter's always like very like, what is this? Like, why are they? Why? Why, what is that? Why? Why is this here? And I explain, and then I fold the yes. thing over. Right. What is this? Um, right. So the next last kid's book is Quentin Dark's Hero Quest in April, and the next spy school is titled. I don't. I don't know. What, that's the thing. I don't know what it's. I don't know what this book always. is. Okay. We've but, already had a lot of questions asking. Oh the next one. Oh really? Gonna- the last yeah like it's oh it's gonna be the last no 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 it's probably no, that's good. I, I do I, it's not gonna be the last one no i uh because uh every once in a while there's actually somebody who's like uh usually like a librarian who's like stop writing in this series i'm tired of i can't keep track of them but uh but but i, I probably shouldn't say that i'm a librarian <laughs> oh are you right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, that's generally what people say the kids i don't know if if, if uh, i mean every once in a while there might be a kid who's like i think you should end this now but for the most part they're like when is the next one coming so who am i to tell them i'm not gonna write it up yeah right write so we've up. already had a lot of questions about spy school 10 and whether you have a teaser possibly oh. teaser a uh, teaser yeah like like to just drop like what it it's uh um adding not not, um, not really i mean i uh, i uh, uh it's uh i mean there's a lot of action in this one it's it's uh it it, it it's kind of uh it came up with a plot that that just is like moving it's moving like a freight train this one that's what i say and there might be there might be a train sequence in it because i used all forms of transportation but not a train yet and how could there be a spy thing without a fight on top of a train of course somebody is asking whether erica will sail whether whether she'll sail a boat a boat i guess we'll sail a boat uh or uh, fight on a train i fighting on a train is better than sailing right, right. uh that's an that's a very specific question uh she's not going to sail a boat in this oh oh whether barica will sail oh so barica will sail ship. oh i see whether we I have see. a ship okay right right right, right. so barica being the ben plus erica uh, whether that's going to go forward that i'm not going to tell you can say, I feel like if you read the last book you should have an idea about what's going on so um yeah so that's that's uh i, I will say to, the, to all the kids like it is uh i didn't uh um i'm very flattered that there's like a a barica name and isn't like that they that they did that little combo thing like uh um uh like uh uh you know back before all the kids were born and ben affleck and jennifer lopez was benifer and now they're back together again so i guess it's benifer two or something but you know it's it's, it's flattering when they when they when they you know, come up with a little malapropism or whatever it is to combine the name. 
to try to do that with Jack and June in my books, but I realized that I made that huge mistake of naming the two main characters four letter words that begin with a J, and now right. it's just hard to read. <laughs> you just <laughs> do they call it J Jack? Yeah. This is June or Jack. Right? Like, wait, that's already the name. <laughs> um, I really liked this question that I that we have here. Uh, Stuart, in your book, you have a normal middle schooler that becomes a spy. In Max, you have a normal middle schooler uh, grade kids that become super awesome apocalypse survivors. If you guys were in middle school again, what would you become? I, well, I'll, I'll say that uh, I, when I was in middle school, I, I, I mean, this whole series comes from the fact that I wanted to be a spy when I was in middle school. I don't know if Max wanted to be an apocalypse survivor. No, I want to be a spy. I have, I have, I... Oh, wait. Yeah, look at that. That's, wait, that oh is very God. hard. It is a 007 tattoo, which that you got is... in middle school, right? That was... Which I got in middle school. My parents said, as soon as you're 10, <laughs> turn 10. Uh, the, but... the house from Shameless. Yes. Although I just realizing now that you have that tattoo and then like if you were a spy at some point, like the bad guys caught you and they'd be like, are oh, you a spy? And you'd be like, no. And they'd be like, oh, look, you have a tattoo. It's 007. And you'd be like, ah. Oh. Um, Which one is he? Like, why, like, why, what kind of spy would get a 007 tattoo that says he's a spy? Right? What kind of spy would go on like multiple missions and never use a code name and just be like James Bond, but I'm just a cool guy. I'm not a spy, <laughs> I swear. <laughs> Put down the martini, yeah. sir. <laughs> he does. There's, there's a, there's, there's a lot of flaws in James Bond's methodology. I think throughout yeah. most of the series. Right? Okay. But that's but when you're a kid, you don't know. You're just like he's so cool. He's the whole, the whole world. Then you get to watch when you're older. And you're like, oh, okay. There's stuff going on here that I didn't realize that, that I didn't right. know. About. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Which is why I like Casino Royale as my favorite James Bond movie. That that he actually he does go in and say James Bond, and Vesper calls him on it and says that's a terrible idea, and he goes, nope. Here's why it's good, and then and then he admits. So it's like that movie, everything kind of makes a certain amount of sense. Maybe not the most sense in the whole world, but it's but it's yeah. You know, so I don't like any of the Craig ones. What? Oh, uh oh, oh no! I was, no! Gonna, get, I was gonna get my tattoo removed. But, really? <laughs> well, we may have a problem. No, wait no, a no. Minute. Oh, so, so wait a minute. Wait a minute. Which which of the James Bonds? Uh, which James Bond is your favorite James Bond? Um, Con Connery, but I like the. You mean like which act? Uh, so my favorite is Spy, uh, Spy Love Me. Is my favorite. Yeah, okay, right. that was like the most like this is a big cool action movie. It felt like a Star Wars movie when I first saw it. Like the ending is like there's different stuff going. Like one guy's climbing to get that little like mini Death Star globe, right, right. and right. then like that house has like the best Bond song. That was our wedding song. Um, nobody okay. does it better. Okay. Looks so convincing because Elise had never seen the movie or game. what? She never seen the movie. She did. She, she, I don't think she's ever seen a single James Bond. Movie. Did you tell her that that song was written about you? Then <laughs> I was like, I had a friend. <laughs> who was, uh, just <laughs> um, but yeah, that uh, "Spy Love Me," uh, "Fear Eyes Only," and "Goldfinger." Those are my faves. All right. Yeah. Um. That, very good. Right. Wait, wait, what was your original question? Did I ever want to, when I was in middle school? Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. We didn't even answer it. The original question wait, was, I think wait. we had spy for the answer. No, no, we said we wanted to be spies when we were in middle school. We wanted middle. to be spies. Or what we want to do now, would we, I mean, would that change now? Would I want to do it? I mean, you know, uh, uh, I mean, knowing what I know now about spies, I probably wouldn't want to be a spy if I was in middle school. But, but, but middle school me who thought being a spy was like being James Bond was like, this is awesome. That's the greatest job ever. Except for the suit, just seemed like you know, like maybe if you just wear shorts and a t-shirt and be a spy, that would work. I wanted to be a Jedi with a hoverboard when I was in. That, that is what I wanted in middle school. That, it's still sort of what I want, um, okay. but that was my right. idea. That would have been right. cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. oh, my baby <laughs> okay well i think this might be a nice time to go ahead and do some lightning round questions because okay. we have okay. right. like, q and a's right. so first one how many pull-ups could you do in a row and i'm going to add on to it. i'm going to say how many pull-ups do you think one of your characters could do and why are you better or worse essentially than the characters you've written 
Uh, oh, it, it depends on the character, really. I mean, I'm sure like Erica Hale could do like 70 pull-ups. Right? I have a pull-up bar right over there. I can just do it. I can, <laughs> I can, I can show you how, how many fewer than she I could do. Do you have a pull-up bar in the background of your office? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, not not to impress people. It's just where. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. I can do I can do zero pull ups. Zero. Do pull -ups. Okay. No, seriously. And I bet Jack now Jack. I mean, the kids haven't gotten like more like Jack. They haven't like gotten more like like lean or muscular throughout the series, <laughs> but they probably would have thinking about it. I um, think they've been those kids have been through a lot. They, they've been through they, a lot, so they right. can probably do pull ups and definitely more than me. Right. right. And their heard. their diets are uh, pretty healthy. I don't know. What are they mm, Dirk is healthy. The other ones eat like all the it's all like the junk food fantasy. All right, which I thought was like the cool fantasy, and then like everybody do school visits now, and the kid, the second grade is like, you know, like we don't drink dairy, and like you know, it's like, <laughs> like, they're like yeah, they're like yeah, like that's all that's all fake fat. Are they eating gluten? No. I'm like, yeah, I'm like I'm like, I'm like they, and the best part. I remember like when I first honestly when I first went and tour, and I was like. I was, I was like, and then you get, they get to do whatever they want. So for dinner, they eat like Doritos and Mountain Dew and nothing else. And it was just like crickets. And, it, <laughs> and they were like, that's not cool. But that's like bad for your arteries. And I was like, hey, so, uh, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of parents who are like, woo. Yeah. yeah that's what I want. It's good to know the books are gluten free. Yes. Um, <laughs> which kind of leads us into our next question, lightning round. Uh, right. Stale pa Sour Patch Kids or Fresh Circus Peanuts? Aren't all, <laughs> aren't all Sour Patch Kids stale? Is that? Stale fire. <laughs> aren't they? Is there, what's a fresh, like right when they come out of the extruder? I don't know. I, uh, I don't hate Circus Peanuts as much as most people, but I would still eat the Sour Patch Kids. I if you don't like Circus Peanuts? People, there are people who hate circus peanuts. Wait, what are circus peanuts? They're those orange. Oh, like, oh. I, I haven't even seen one. Honestly. I never had one of those. I just meant peanuts. Also, always right. Right. No, no, I think they were all made back in 1950, and we're still eating them. <laughs> it's like they, the company went out of business. But okay. Wait, it, I'm, I'm interrupting the lightning round, sort of. But like, so I had to do one time. I had, I had a panel, and I didn't realize till the last minute that I had to host it. I didn't realize that I was like the thing, and it was I was like the. Um, Host, whatever, moderator. Right. Right. And I did a lot. And Sam was like, do light. I was like, okay, I do the lightning round. And it was like R.L. Stein. And I was like, very nervous. And a couple of people. And so I thought it'd be really funny. Like my lightning round was all like questions about lightning. I was like, now here's the lightning round. And I was like, electricity <laughs> plus static form what? They answered everything was lightning. And I like, thought it was so funny. And everybody was like, nobody laughed. Nobody got it. <laughs> oh, it was awful. I love that though. <laughs> I it was, and now it's time for the lightning round. And it was like, what strikes on a like when yeah yeah if you want to ask one of those questions i'll be happy to we, we can do we can do one more lightning before we get we have 25 uh q a some of them are oh the same gosh. okay all right all right we'll, we'll do one go. more one more lightning like, real quick. A scale of one to ten how good are you, uh, are you at keeping secrets we, one is bad and ten is good is good yeah I can't tell you how good I am at keeping secrets because especially about your books, people are so frustrated. I guess <laughs> it's a staff. secret. So I, I um, so I'm I guess a, it's a ten. I'm a seven, but I love picturing Stu. You go on an interview for the CIA, and they ask you that, and you're like, "Wait, the one is bad or good?" <laughs> <laughs> this fail, it comes up a lot. It comes up a lot when you're a spy. I think they're like, "All right, you have to diffuse this thing." Right, like. You know, how bad is Smirsh? Uh, I don't know. I, like, I don't want to say one if they're. Yeah. Man, I don't think so. Okay. Let's start. Are we good to go into? Yeah, yeah we can get some kids. We have questions. so many. We have yeah. 26. So let's make sure that we get most of these yeah. answered. Um, we already answered Spy School 10 will not be the last one. A lot of people ask that. So let's go on to the next one. So for Stu, what is the process for you for making a book? Which is kind of already what we've. Asked, so I guess I'll add, tack on to that. Did you go on a cruise for uh, research? For yeah, yeah, yeah. Time? No, I, I did. I did. And I and I had my uh, and my kids came and I said, like, figure out where all the action sequences will be. And and uh, 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 we uh, we tried to I tried to get into like the the bridge and the engine room. They wouldn't let me into the bridge or the engine room. So then I was just like, where can I get into? Can I get into the kitchen? And they were like, yeah. And then we went in the kitchen and the kitchen on a cruise ship is like 
this, it's enormous because they're feeding several thousand people. You know, they have one kitchen that's firing food all over the ship. And so, and I was like, the kitchen's a cool place for an action sequence. So, you know, that, that I, that's kind of, I don't know. We went all over the place inventing stuff. <laughs> People really like Verica. I'm looking through here too. People are they really? In the chat right now, people are really liking Verica in the chat. Are they? Are they telling me that I should? Be? Right. You should drop hints, but you've already said that you will not. Yeah. Uh, we do have a lot of questions about food. Uh, do you like candy dots? Because we're talking about stale uh, kind of. <laughs> do kids even know what these are? Do they even know what candy dots? I mean, do they still make those? those um, are... Right. Uh, I, I th that was. Uh, that was not the best candy because the paper would come off with it. And yeah. then there was no way to get the dot off. The, it was like, whose ever idea was to be like, I know, let's, let's invent a candy that the packaging is impossible to remove from the bag and the candy will be this big. It was, uh, it was not, not great. So. I had a gift of some candy I was trying to find. Um, candy, I, I, only, I only like chocolate candies really. I used to like Sour Patch Kids and Swedish Fish, but now I mostly just like chocolate candies, but any mm -hmm. chocolate candy will do. I was, I but was, if it's a chocolate covered Swedish fish, yeah, then I would do it. Okay. Oh, I just like I would just like suck on it and then spit it out once I hit the fish. Oh. I like all kinds of stuff. I was at Seven Eleven at three a.m. last night getting Reese's sticks. And, really? Uh, yes. Because you'd locked your food in your, in your <laughs> it's all, my food. <laughs> <laughs> all my food and my insulin, which is just a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I like. Uh, uh, I was so I, I went. To, I was trying to find this the dumb gif I made. I went to see. Uh, well, it's not, not appropriate. But I went to see a, a, a movie about a character who has candy in his name with my sister. Oh, it was the first time going to see a movie, and I was so excited to go to get like. No, it was, it was like second time, but like I'd been a while since since uh, like pandemic stuff. And I was so excited to get candy, and I made a gif of um, from um, what's the Tom Hanks movie where he's the captain of the boat. Uh, uh Captain Phillips. Yeah, yeah, and I made a, like I, I like edited a gift to be like, "Who's the candy man now?" Because I was gonna eat all this candy, and like mm -hmm. I said, my sister, I was very excited. And then um, I got there, and they were not serving any candy because of it's, I don't know. I guess it's like a pandemic thing, but like they still serve popcorn. What really? Yeah. What? Yeah. Well, I'm not gonna name any theaters, but my we have not found that they're not serving candy at the theaters. It might, it might have been like a, a supply line thing. They didn't explain. So maybe I don't. Maybe I a candy wrong. shortage. Right. Yeah, I don't know. There's a book shortage, right? Is, it, it, is <laughs> isn't that true? Are you guys not yeah. getting books? We do have a little bit of a book shortage sometimes, but mostly it's just like the chip readers. It's copper shortage, candy shortage. Interesting. Lots right. of things. But yeah. It was because you guys printed so many free constitutions that. <laughs> that was a, that was long before the pandemic. I mean, you mean I get the constitution anymore? I, right now, all the kids are just going like, "There's a candy shortage." What? Yeah, no. Oh, there's no candy. Shortage. Just when everything was going so well. No. Right. Yes. Let's do. Let's. Okay. So we've got a few also asking what it, uh, both of you. What is your favorite Last Kids on Earth book in the series? I'm going to go ahead and say it's Stu's not read any of them. What? <laughs> yes. Mike, Hold Mike. out. <laughs> Are you I, I, Mike? Have you read Spy School? No. Right. <laughs> I read The Spy Who Came In from the Cold Ones, and I really liked oh, it. Oh, okay. Well, that, that's but I didn't follow it. Um, no, actually, no, I, I read. Wait, can I, wait, can I show this yeah. too? Yeah, yeah, you can show it. That? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah I read cool. this, show that. which is at advanced, right? Is it? Yeah, yeah it's an advanced copy, copy. Right. of Spy School um, graphic novel. Right, okay. And that way you get all, this, all the stuff without the. Is born prose. Right, that's true. I did. I read June's Wild Flight because you sent it to me. Oh, I did right. Do that's actually one of my favorite ones. Right. Um, my favorite last kids, but my first, my least favorite, and my most favorite last kids book is the first one because that's one took me the longest to write. It took me like three years to write, and um, which is absurd. But uh, so what happened was, uh, it, uh, I wanted to write the book that became Last Kids. What a book I wanted to write. And um, then I went, I took it to publishers and agents, and they all said that the story about four kids at the end of the world where everybody else is a zombie would be like not that funny and exciting. Like, well, not, no, not, not, not exciting, is wrong word. not that funny and like and fun and lighthearted. And I was like, it's gonna be a lot of jokes. And like, what jokes? All they're, they're missing their parents all the time. And so um, there was a publisher who was interested, no, my publisher, Penguin, but they uh, sort of the way I pitched it then, because um, I need to pay my rent, so I wanted to sell the book no matter what was that it would be they would travel through the treehouse to an alternate dimension where it was the end of the world they would like come back 
to this dimension and it would be like more like spider-man like they're like oh we gotta get, get back in time for class and we got like monster gunk in our boots and come through and i spent like years right like two years once i signed the contract writing that and um i delivered it to my editor um like five drafts it was done it was gonna go to the illustrator and i really didn't like it and i woke up like in a like in a movie like in a cold sweat and i asked my wife what i should do because she was an editor that's how we met and um and she's like you should call them and tell them and i don't like conflict or confrontation so i had to type up like an email that i then read out loud to my editor about like how i think i could do the other version the original version is like actually the end of the world and then i wrote that one so it took like two and a half years to get back to the start of the thing um so that was a long like sad process and that's why it's my least favorite but also my favorite because like people liked it when it came out uh yeah, I mean, I think, well, I think we all that like where you're like, oh, this book, like the first one is the hardest book in the series to write, and then which is part of the reason we do series, right? Because because uh, uh, because you've done all the setup, right? And now you're like, oh, I like these characters, I like this world, I got more ideas, so I'm gonna keep just doing this. Right? That's how I felt until I hit book five when I was like, I need to either. Um, get off the pot or hang around on the pot for longer but i had to make a decision because it was like do i keep doing like adventures in the town with like around the tree house and monsters or do i like lean fully into like there's one big bad that's like that and it's going to become like a sort of lord of the rings the like like epic kind of quest thing and they're going to leave the town behind which has like been the location for the whole thing and um and then like then knowing there's an end to the series and like working towards that ending and once i did that it was sort of scary and I find it's like now it's gotten harder again, like trying to keep track of all the bad guys and like, like try to, the hardest thing is trying to write um, like a sort of large scale now, like adventure series in the first person, because the only time that like you can ever, it's not like the movies where you just like cut to the Death Star and it's like, right. oh, there's, so it's like always the kids are like, Kind of like the Hardy Boys are kind of kind of rock, like listening to like that guy's <laughs> <the> plans. <laughs> it's like interdimensional, like massive creatures that are like, well, if you go here at six o'clock, we can get them. Like, <laughs> and the kids are like, oh, we can't be there at six o'clock. Um, so I find that actually it's very hard. Like I'm coming up with like 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 there's different like creatures who can like like see through different time spaces so that they can like see what's going on. And um, I'm reading like I'm reading the Dark Tower right now series and um trade i read and it's like he just he just i was like i was like, i can't do a crystal ball that's like been done too much and stephen king just like and then there's a crystal ball i was like what that's all he, he so, can do it right? yeah i know he gets right yeah, yeah. Okay. the reason the reason stephen king can do it is because stephen king already had all the ideas right i mean there's so many he's had so many ideas at a certain point yeah. he's like uh yeah i'm just gonna do a crystal ball i did i did 18 other things yeah yeah i already did that dog with the, with right. the rabies I know, I know that kids are, uh, wait, because you showed that the kids were saying, like, how do they get the, the graphic novel, which is, that comes out February 1st, and then I have a new thing called Once Upon a Time, it comes out March 1st, mm -hmm. and then, and then when does, when does uh, your seven and a half come out, Max? Um, Dexter's? April. April, okay. All right. I don't, I don't know, I don't know the date yet. Uh, April, and then the next book will be um a year from yesterday okay well okay yeah and marching towards a finish line okay and speaking of like when you're coming out with new books and how you kind of conceptualize like in world build are you thinking about ever doing crossovers this is mostly for you Stu. but like you think you would do crossovers between okay. your characters because connor wants to know okay <laughs> my dog just walked oh, hi <laughs> dog came and I just opened the door himself and came in and got this. Uh, okay, all right, hold on. He's here. Right? I'll just serve the kids. You can. Nope. Now he went the. <sighs> there was a creature moving around. It's a dog. Uh, so uh, I'm not. Uh, I, I'm not. I don't think I'm going to do a crossover anytime soon. Uh, which I know uh, a lot of people want it, but uh, it. You know, it. It like I like doing all these different series because I can jump from. I, I can like put one aside and do another one. And then if I combine it, then I didn't leave one behind and it, I, like it, it's all the same. And it, I, I feel like unless I come up with like the best idea for this thing ever, it's it's not going to be what everybody wants it to be. Like there's all these kids have like written fan fictions that this is what it is. And now if I do it, they're going to be like, nah, my idea was better. 
So, um, so I don't know. So, the, so the best way to avoid that is just to not actually uh, write the book. I think, but I, it's it's really more like it just to me, like the, the the things work better in their own universes, and and to you know, so to just to have them kind of go and like you know, fun jungle is its own thing, and spy school is its own thing. Spy school is a little sillier. Fun jungles, uh, you know, a little more possible and so to combine them suddenly like throws everything out of whack i think charlie thorne could fit in charlie thorne might be able to but uh charlie thorne's more in the fun jungle world uh and and uh, i know everyone is I, I i occasionally drop an easter egg in that could link the series but you know it's just it's not it's not proof it's just like a little fun thing to throw into the books to say like you know okay charlie thorne was talking about the dark tower Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I think the other books here. And the next of the universe. Yeah. <laughs> Max, we have another question for you from Wesley. Uh, Wesley's wondering, are you a collector? I think probably looking at all of your little pops <laughs> behind you, like your the setup behind you, it gives a collector. Yeah, I that. have a lot of um, the, um, I collect, it's sort of a mess now, but I have like, I collect so it looks like it looks like I'm doing a uh, what does Amazon not allow? Columns? Um, what, what is it? Amazon not allow? Yeah, it looks like I'm doing like an invasive oh. search. Um, I collect like fake action figures, like right. blue action figures like that, and then um, like all sorts of other um, a lot of like oh. toys. Um, those are hard to sort of see up there, but like I have a lot of like vintage toys and stuff. Oh, I collect movie novelizations. Uh, um, uh, so that's my movie it's like half my movie novelizations um, and I have like three boxes full of Funko Pop toys that like I never um, unpacked when I moved so I have like a lot of stuff for a while I had a ton of um, oh so this is like so I had a ton I collected for a long time when I was going on tour I'd always go to comic stores and get vintage Star Wars toys I got a lot of them I like, that the, the figures and then I um, I don't think I ever told her this but um, I mistakenly gave them all when i moved from new york long island to new york to jen kalanita's son oh i meant to give like something else but it was like uh like a huge collection i think of action figures that um oh. i was really excited to have and then so now jen kalanita's son is playing with him um uh, the best novelization wait so i think i showed this to you recently wait, wait, I, yeah i well i mean it is what do you got what do you get oh is that written in dialect like, is it, is it first person where they're kind of like... It is. They, out by the gas pumps, Harry was still trying to charm the beautiful woman. Nope, nope. Okay. okay. It's just written and straight up. Home Alone is good. All right. And, um... I can't believe you even have it. <laughs> Did you read those instead of seeing the movie? Because good. you just didn't... i never seen a movie in my entire life. This is all... <laughs> Uh, we do have another question. I like this okay. one too. For both of you, who are your favorite authors? Oh, besides Max? Uh, no. <laughs> um, you know, it's interesting because, I mean, he gets into this place of saying like, oh, okay, we, we have friends who, uh, who, I mean, we've become friends with authors, uh, which is so like, there's people who are like, oh, this author is just a great person. Uh, but when, when I was a kid growing up uh my my uh, big well i i loved uh, the western game by ellen raskin but then uh and and roald Dahl, who was so funny i found roald Dahl's house in la the other day um where it's, it's in it's uh on ivanhoe in uh well, somebody told me so i haven't but but yeah it's over in silver lake and it looks like a castle and it's it's oh, I was, like, oh. I was yeah. like what is this amazing house and they're like oh that was roald Dahl's house um uh but um which I'm now saying and realizing I didn't prove. Uh, so uh, I, mean, but, I like the I found Roald Dahl's house like it was like a lost treasure, and then <laughs> it, somebody <laughs> told me where he lived. <laughs> well, I was standing in front of it, and I said, well, "Oh, oh okay. Cool house. okay, okay, okay." And somebody okay. was like, "That's Roald Dahl's house." Right. Oh, that's very like, cool. Oh. Okay. So I didn't find. Uh, uh, but then I liked uh, uh, Douglas Adams, who did the uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and uh, and Michael Crichton, who created Jurassic Park among other things. And so that's the guy who I was like, oh man, you can combine science and adventure. Oh, this is what I want to do. Michael Crichton has like the most like underappreciated career, I think, in terms of like, he like directed Westworld and like- Oh, no, he, he was like 25 and he was like, he'd been a, he went to medical school. 
He wrote <laughs> books on the side. Bonkers. He wrote a best-selling book, and then he like he was like, oh, I'm not going to be a doctor. He had kind of been a doctor, and then he oh right because he went to residency. He he then he then he's like directing movies like in his twenties, and then like and meanwhile like he's written this this script for a TV show set in a in a you know in an ER that like uh like it's like nothing happens and then and then uh one day like he's he, like steven spielberg's like making jurassic park and he's like what else you got and he's like oh well, oh, i just saw this thing like i got this old script and they put it on television because the the number one tv show oh, yeah. in the world right we have only i read jurassic park and the andromeda strain that's all i've read of his I think. It, it, it's uh his stuff is great uh it's so much fun some of it has got a little dated because the technology in it but um but yeah, it's there's there's great stuff. And, and now now there might be uh, some of his later stuff might not be quite as good quality. Yeah. That, but but um, I don't know. So we have another question from you from Drew uh, about Moonbase Alpha. Is there okay. any news? Is there there's any Jeff news about about whether or not there'll be another uh, another mm -hmm. book or uh, there uh, is not going to be another book on that series now because I felt like when I got to three going to four was going to start feeling repetitive so i so i stopped but there may be a moon base alpha television show at some point soon so mm -hmm. so that that is that is uh there there we've got some big producers and big studio on so we gotta jump through a couple hoops with that to see but wait max never said who his favorite authors were we did i didn't even get, i i told oh, I did, i'm bad with that because i don't i always have like favorite books and stuff you got a favorite uh, book you got a favorite book um, like, was it the person who wrote the uh, movie adaptation? Uh, the adaptation of Dumb and Dumber? Was it that guy? <laughs> okay. um, uh, uh, I like um, uh, Richard Stark's Parker series. Is like a oh, okay. that is my favorite of all time. And then um, I also like the Parker series by um, the the more or less the less the less hard boiled um, crime series. And then Jeff Smith's Bone series is my favorite. Oh thing maybe ever and then i was talking earlier to the illustrator my illustrator on another event about um growing up really loving tintin and it's very complicated now tintin but like i still like i i it really like made me want to tell to, to like to tell stories in a way um and uh where's waldo to be honest like i love where's waldo books like i those like those big epic scenes with stuff going on everywhere um, and like sort of finding like the little mini stories in the art and like in like the non story or something. I don't know. I love that. I was like really fascinated by that. And now I get uh, now me and my daughter read Where's Waldo? Do you get angry at her when you're like, he's right there? He's Waldo right there. is there. And there's the wizard and there's the scroll. Next page. It's bedtime. Yeah. You ever no, do I I spy books? What's that? Do you ever do I spy books too? Yeah, yes, we do. Because she also do like I Spy, that little eye, and like we play that around. So we've got a bunch of I Spy stuff too. Um, from Chevaliers, I believe, actually. We got one recently. Uh, you know, it's so funny. I think, like one of my favorite Simpsons jokes of all time it, it is like 20 years old, where he, like Bart's got a Where's Waldo, and he opens it, and Waldo's just standing there in the front, <laughs> like waving. And Bart's like, ah, oh, this guy's not even trying anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> Like, since it makes a joke like and then 20 years later it's still relevant because they're still wears well those books i'm looking around like other books oh and when i was growing up like and well still today but like really when i was growing up like the um all the cross-section books those like like the star wars cross section oh, right, right. those things the james bond one is my favorite because they had a cross-section of the man of the golden like uh, man of the golden gun his like castle for the grand finale oh, and right. how the whole thing flowed and all that stuff and i was like this is the coolest thing ever um i love all those i still have a bunch of those Oh man, I got a Batman uh, over there that had like it had that for Batman's uh, penthouse apartment. Right, that was cool. Like not the Batcave, but like it was. Well, it, the, people the, want to see is his apartment. <laughs> it, the, the apartment was cool. It was a. Uh, uh, it was kind of like Stark Tower, uh, way ahead of time, and then the Batcave was all the way down the bottom. Right. So, um, right. Did that James Bond book have a cross section of James Bond too? Like, ooh. There's his spleen. Oh, that's it. <laughs> no, but I did have like, like, like. Here's like his, like you know, the uh, Omega watch and stuff, and pointed to all the different parts. I think it came out like when Die Another Day came out. The one that I have still, the one, the ones I had back in the day were older. But um, so it's like, yeah, it's like pointing to like uh, his invisible car, wow. his blank page. Like, oh well, was that <laughs> made money on that one? <laughs> They're not even crying anymore.
We do. We have people practically begging over here in the Q and A and the chat of whether you're going to have a cover reveal for uh, Spy. Sorry, Spy School Ten. Spy School Ten. Yeah. Like at some point, but I, I don't have. Uh, you you guys are really like we're you know it's a year. I, it's a process. So so, so uh, you know like I'm still working on the story, and then it's got to go to Lucy Cummins, who is the amazing designer who does my covers, and and then and then you know covers go through drafts too. So mm -hmm. usually by the time you know it looks like Lucy hits it out of the park on it, but uh, like but she you know she she's got to take some time and effort, and she's actually like uh, nine and a half months pregnant right now, I think, or something like that. So so it might be a while till she can. Uh, Get her, or like she's gonna have a baby any day, and uh, so it, it uh, I, I'm not gonna force her to do this cover, uh, like while while yeah. she's in labor or anything. So, um, moral of the story everyone needs to be patient, right? right. Because I, I'll tell you, I mean, I know you guys want to see it, that baby, you guys nine and a half months, let's go. Wait, 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 the moment we reveal it, then it's just gonna give you all sorts of other questions. They're gonna be like, wait, yeah. what's this, what's this, what's this? So, it's not gonna be like you're not gonna see it and be like, oh, good, okay, I have no further questions. Right. <laughs> That'd be awful if they did, though. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm Can you give them the habitat that it's going to be in, possibly? The habitat? For, That's the word, like, their words, habitat. The, I think you did. Be, I, I feel like you did. Be, it, this one's moving around. That's what's going right. on. You said yeah. it's going to be an adventure. We're on right. our feet. Maybe. Right, right, right. This is this is more of a, uh, this one's more of a trance. It's, it's moving from place to place. That's what's happening. You're going to be on foot. <laughs> yes. No, no, no. <laughs> Um, We've right. got a few other like nice silly questions. Like, what's your what's your favorite food? Oh, just in general. Just in general, ice cream. Ice cream. Which ice I already cream. talked about, right? Yeah, yeah, ice cream. Some max. Oh, also ice cream. Anything. Then we're fine. <laughs> if I get anything with no consequences, it would be ice cream. <laughs> what about favorite sport? That that it almost goes to like there's like uh, my favorite sport to play is tennis. My favorite one to be at the game is baseball. And then, uh, I, but I, and I probably would, but I like watching football on television. I don't, but if I want to play is, uh, ping pong or uh, if you count video games these days, I don't know if kids will do, then I like to go to baseball games. I don't really like to go to, I honestly don't like baseball. I love to go to, and then every other one, unless I have like a rooting interest, I don't really care that much. Baseball, I can kind of go to anyone and enjoy it. Do you, do you remember? Do you remember in the the Boston the Red Sox World Series like uh, when was it? Oh, oh, oh four, right? Before they won. when Stephen King was at the games, like working on his book, in the, and they would always cut to him because he'd been waiting forever for this, and they would cut right. to him. And he, he would have like he had a manuscript with him, and he was just editing it. I didn't. I, I but but it, but he's always doing that because he's got like seven books coming. Out. Right. That's right. Yeah, right. Like, they're like, oh, here's Stephen King, like you know, at the opera. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Stephen King skydiving. That's, I actually, I, I get to, I actually, well, I didn't get to meet Stephen King, but Stephen King was, he got nominated for an Edgar Award the same time I did. And like having, like, he, he doesn't go out that much, right? I mean, like, like publishing people don't see him. And so he was there and everybody in publishing was like, oh my God, take a selfie of me with like Stephen King in the background, right? And then, and uh, right. And then uh, I think during, during the award ceremony, he was probably just writing, you know. Like, you know did you meet him? No, no, we were all terrified of him. Really? We were all like, he was too, he was too important. Right. I've met all these other great writers there, like, like uh, Walter Mosley and Lee Child and, and, and uh, uh, Gillian Flynn and everybody. But then like, you know, every, every like everybody was like, I, I, I'm too nervous to go meet Stephen King. Well, I, I was at an event with Walter Mosley and I spoke before him and like, I don't understand why I was at, at the same, like, it seems really silly yeah. that I was there, but like um, Penguin sent like these inflatable, like like zombie bats right. and like i left it up at the podium by mistake and like <laughs> and like walter Mosley's like what is this and he was like hitting people in the crowd with it and it was was he really yes it was a very That's cool great. oh excellent okay. very cool. <laughs> i'll text you that though i guess as we wrap up here we're almost at five uh i think a nice final question would be for each of you what's the like who is your favorite character to write in each of your respective series. And also, Stu, you can pick one that's not in Spy School. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, um, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, because, uh, I mean, 
I, I, I do like reading Charlie Thorne now because she's, she just gets to, she's kind of a smart ass. Can I, I, don't, I think I can say that. I think that's hard. And, uh, um, and she's just got like this incredible wealth of knowledge and it's fun to just find stuff and then have Charlie explain stuff in her voice and, you know, and, and be sassy and snarky and then go off and save the world and do cool stuff. So um, I'm having a lot of fun with her. I don't, I don't, I don't have one of my, my, but my favorite thing that I always look forward to writing is like all uh, the kids when the four kids are together in danger and like, but they're still joking. Like whenever it feels like the, um, like the, the rooftop at the end of the Ghostbusters, that's like, right, right, right. Yeah. that's what I like to write where it's like, right. you know, you know, Ray, like that sort of stuff. Um, so I always look forward to that stuff. So I, I like, I like, and I like anytime like during the interact, I just like writing dialogue. So like whenever they're interacting and like, in like a, you know, not like in like, in like a, any sort of fun way is like what I look forward to writing. Those, those, I, I do like those scenes too. Cause they kind of, that's that, right. It sort of flows and you just go like, oh, right. You know, then, yeah, it's like, oh, it's back and forth. And like, there's, you'll find some little funny like runner to put in and like, it feels really great. It's like, oh, it's clicking, it's working. And then I have to like write like a paragraph of like describing like, something and i crumble <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing you've written it all in your outline already that's what i'm like illustration here <laughs> yes <laughs> having written a gun into my first illustrated book that's I, I, that's great you were like it looked like this and then it, you just hand it off yep, <laughs> great and every time out, you sometimes like yeah but everything seems hard to write i'm like okay doug can draw it all right Okay, well, it's been an honor having you both here today and special shout out to our audience for asking wonderful questions and really. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Sorry, we didn't get to everybody's forward. questions. Yeah. We got to most of them. Some of them uh, are not being answered for legitimate reasons. So. Okay. All right. It's just very hard. We, it's hard for us to keep track of everything coming. Yeah, through. we would. Yeah. It would be given away too much. We got to be uh, patient. Okay. Here. Right. Um, okay. Just yeah. person, whoever, whoever showed up and said, "I'm an hour late." Did I miss anything just now? Is <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, so oh, funny. <laughs> it really? Did somebody say that? Yeah. Um, so funny. So, yeah. Oh, a, a that's name, funny. A name. <laughs> A name? Yeah. Uh, well, we'll have a recording of it on Chevalier's. So look out, you missed a lot of important stuff about snacks. And that is hilarious. Definitely nothing uh, about books. Um, <laughs> okay, well, yes, yeah. good night. Uh, I guess right, I'll right, right. So, time. right, so just in case, in case a name asks kids, mm -hmm. <clears throat> everything we told about how, uh, what to actually do when the zombies really come is top secret. It was only for the people who tuned in at the beginning. So, and I and I am surprised you went in such a graphic direction for the Spy School Ten cover. I know, I know. Really <laughs> so violent, but it's very cool. But the, the kids are getting older, so yeah. yeah. Um, uh, thank you so much, hey, uh, everybody. Support. Your local bookstore support. Uh, thanks to Chevaliers for doing this. Uh, uh, you can order our books there, and we will. We will. You can order signed copies of our books, and we can personalize them. You can say, "Please have Max or Stuart uh, sign a copy to me." And we both live very close to that store. And we might uh, bump into each other on the way. And right. Then, exactly. Sometimes, right. We might even show up. Mixed or, up, and I sign. The copy of Spice Do the copy yeah. of Last Kids, and then it's like a right, right, yeah, yeah. You could honestly even say, could could Max sign a copy of Spy School for me, or could Stuart Gibbs sign a copy of, That's and, and, and we'll do it, we'll do it, right? I'll sign a copy. There's the crossover. Of, of Last That's the crossover right. they want. There you go. <laughs> there you go, right there. Why not? Oh my gosh, you guys have been fantastic. Thank you so much for the thank you for having us. Bye everybody. Okay, bye everybody. Bye. 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 <laughs>